Hi everyone, George here, and welcome to this video where we take a deep dive into my Awaze Highline 175 planted Malawi cichlid tank that was originally set up two years ago. You can check out how it was aquascoped and the follow-up update videos by clicking the playlist link in the description. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and click that bell icon so you can be notified about new video uploads. Me and my family have thoroughly enjoyed living with this aquarium for the last 24 months. It was my first attempt at creating a Malawi cichlid scape at home, although I have scaped a much larger Malawi cichlid tank with my friend Scott Lynch that measured 6x2x2 by two by two feet or 180 gallons. Coincidentally, the fish in this tank were also supplied by the father and son team, Kevin Scott Lynch, who bred these fish themselves from wild caught stock. I'll leave a link to the African cichlid supply business, Kev's Riffs, in the description. The fish species are the beautiful Chindongo Saluzi with the males being the blue and black stripes and the females a bright yellow. Interestingly, all these fish start off life yellow and gradually develop their blue if they're males. Subdominant males develop a mixture of the two colours and the most dominant females can also do the same. I started off with 10 fish altogether, 6 females and 4 males. It's important to have more females than males in order to minimise aggression. They are around 5 months old when I received them, and they were first generation fish, also known as F1, bred from wild caught specimens. They only measured around 5cm or 2 inches long, and now, almost 2 years later, the largest male fish measures around 12cm or 5 inches total length. It's been a real joy to watch them grow, and also witness their breeding. There's 3 juveniles that are almost the same size as the original fish stocking, and over a dozen fry. Interestingly, the mortality rate of the fish have improved considerably since the addition of live aquarium plants. I believe this is a combination of more hiding places amongst the plant roots, improved water quality from the plant growth, and perhaps even a food source as the fish enjoy nibbling at the leaves and roots. Now I know what many of you may be thinking, George, your tank is overstocked, and I would agree with you. Measuring 175 litres or 46 US gallons, and with so many relatively large fish, it does seem somewhat overcrowded, doesn't it? The good news is that the water quality remains suitable, with two 50% water changes carried out weekly with my mineral loaded hard tap water. Filtration is performed by the awesome Awaze Biomaster 600 Thermo, and the quick release pre filter is cleaned weekly. The fish are highly active with huge appetites, apparently healthy, showing great colour, spawning regularly, and I still have all 10 of the original fish after two years. However, I do realise that this size aquarium is not an appropriately sized solution for the long term keeping of so many of these larger fish. So I called Scott Lynch and asked for his expert advice. He suggested rehoming the fry and maybe one or two adults. The other option, of course, is to get another larger aquarium, but unfortunately there isn't the space right now in the gallery. However, there are rumours of an Awaze Highline 600 coming later this year. So maybe that's a good opportunity to rehome my discus in a bigger tank and put these fish in the Highline 400 that the discus now live in. To fit a larger tank, I would, however, have to lose my Starline 85 and 125. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. So, moving on to the actual aquascape now. The original aquascape featured many more rocks than there are right now. I originally used over 50 kilograms or 120 pounds of Siriu stone and probably have around 20 kilos or 44 pounds right now. Over the months I gradually refined the layout by removing some stones and repositioning others. This increased overall water volume by removing the large stones and I believe has improved the overall aesthetic. The classic triangular design has remained a constant though and four months ago I added some live aquarium plants from Tropica. I was warned off by many folk insisting that they wouldn't survive for long with the cichlids tearing them up and or eating them. However, as you can see the majority are in good condition with some bite marks on some of the Anubius leaves. The species include Anubius barteri, Variety barteri, Anubius nana, Anubius petite, Microsaurum terapus trident, and Microsaurum terapus windelov. Most of the plants are from Tropica's Aquadecor range, which are plants already grown in their greenhouses, ready attached to wood or rock. This makes them very tough, with no chance of them being uprooted, as they are not planted into the substrate. No CO2 injection is used, and I don't add any liquid fertilizer so you could say this is a truly low-tech planted tank. To help with the constant battle of algae build up on the rocks and plant leaves, I added a bunch of nearite snails from my discus tank. I was pleasantly surprised to watch them clean almost all visible algae from every surface over a 72-hour period. 
There was some concern that the fish would constantly harass the snails, but I'm pleased to report that they're left almost completely alone. The snails do seem to have caused some damage on a couple of anubias leaves, but overall I'm pleased at how they cleaned up all of the algae. The substrate in here is a thin layer of Unipac Maui sand, which is an inert quartz gravel with round grains so they don't harm the fish's mouths. Mixed in with the Maui sand is some Denale Rio Zingu gravel, which consists of larger grains that harmonise well with the sand. I love the way the greys of the rocks complement the substrate, with the black background also helping to contrast very effectively with the fish colours. The males love to constantly move the gravel around, digging and spitting out the substrate elsewhere. It's fascinating to watch, and I quickly accepted that my usual taste for a nice flat substrate had to be sacrificed. The reason the fish move the gravel around so much is so that they can make pit-like areas in the substrate ready for nesting. Their breeding behaviour is incredibly interesting, and usually starts with the male encouraging the female to the nest area by shimmering. Then the male uses its bright yellow spot near its tail that mimics an egg to encourage the female nearby and then deposits its sperm. The fertilised eggs then develop into fry over around 20 days in the female's mouth, during which time the mother rarely eats anything. This mouth brooding characteristic is common amongst almost all Malawi cichlids and I find it absolutely amazing. Moving on to the actual aquarium and equipment, as discussed the tank is an Awaze Highline 175 holding 175 litres or 46 US gallons. It's a high quality premium aquarium and cabinet that I've been highly impressed with over the last two years of use. The relatively tall cabinet is unique to the 175 Highline and is great for living spaces where it can be enjoyed standing up or sitting from a distance. It's filtered with a large external canister filter, the Biomaster 600 Thermo, with a built-in heater and quick-release pre-filter. I use Biomaster filters on almost all of my tanks now and recommend them to all my clients because the combination of their ease of maintenance, built-in heater and reliability is second to none in my experience. The lighting is the Awaze Premium 65 LED that's also connected to the Awaze Easy Aquarium Controller. This allows you to set the photo period with full control over the spectrum, including zonal lighting if you wanted to spotlight a specific area of the aquascape. You can also induce cloud cover effects, sunrise effects, etc. It really is a great light unit. All this is done via the Easy Aquarium Controller app. Look out for a full video on the Awaze Premium Lighting and Easy Aquarium Controller soon.